Indonesia's 231 million strong Muslim population makes the country 87% Muslim. Pakistan's 200 million Muslims make it a whopping 96% Muslim. On the other hand, India's 195 million Muslims makes India 14% Muslim and Bangladesh's 153 million Muslims make it 90% Muslim. These are the top four largest Muslim countries in the world and you can see a trend. About two-thirds of the world's Muslims live in countries with the ten largest Muslim populations, while only 48% of the world's Christians live in countries with the ten largest Christian populations. An exception to that rule is Nigeria, where no religion has claimed to a significant majority. It has the sixth largest Christian population in the world at 95 million, and also the world's fifth largest Muslim population at 103 million. Basically, there are more Muslims in Nigeria than there are people in Saudi Arabia. There are many multi-faith countries in the world, but Nigeria, a country of 219 million people, is the only one whose population is almost equally split between Christians and Muslims. Religion is so woven into the country's identity that an academic nicknamed it the Pentecostal Republic. But do Nigerian Muslims consider the country Islamic? I don't mean to connect dots that don't exist, but hear me out. Nigeria is one of the most Christian populated Islamic nations in the world. That bold statement was made by Mohammed Nuruddin, a foreign minister of state for foreign affairs. Believers of these two major religions take divergent positions on the question of the secularity of the Nigerian state. While most Christians argue for separation of the Nigerian state from religion, most Muslims advocate for the fusion of religion, the state and the law. To many of them, the Sharia ought to govern the totality of the life of a Muslim from cradle to grave. The majority of Nigerians believe Nigeria is a secular country with no official religion. However, pundits have argued that the 1999 constitution does not regard Nigeria as a secular state. Here's why. Sharia is mentioned 73 times, Islam is mentioned 28 times, Grand Qadi is mentioned 54 times, Muslim is mentioned 10 times. There is no single mention of Christ, no single mention of Christianity, and no single mention of church. To top it all off, all Muslim-majority northern states have implemented Sharia law. And get this, the country is a member of the Organization of Islamic Conference, a 57-member group of predominantly Islamic countries. You see, in southern Nigeria, religious bumper stickers abound. I am a winner. Work with us at the Redeemed Church. Jesus Christ gives, heals, and delivers. All these and more abound in Lagos, not to mention huge billboards advertising mega churches hanging over streets seething with thousands of people. In the north, religious belief is no less profound, but it takes another form, ordered, hierarchical and rigorous. The faith of the dominant Hausa and Fulani ethnic groups provides the bedrock of a society still structured around the authority of traditional Muslim rulers. Nigeria's motto is simple, unity and faith. But there is so little of the former and so much of the latter that the religious balance of Africa's giant is no simple affair. But that is only part of the picture. The divisions between Christianity and Islam are more than symbolic in Africa's most populous nation. Both compete for space, converts and political domination. There is an invincible geographic boundary. Nigerian Muslims tend to live in the north, while Christians live in the south. Although members of the two faiths live everywhere across the country, do business together and even intermarry. Many Nigerian Muslims see themselves as standing at the southern tip of the Islamic world because to the immediate south lie many African nations that tend to embrace Christianity. Agitated demands for the gradual Islamization of the country are impassioned and growing louder as calls to impose Islamic Sharia courts in the largely Christian and animist South have been increasing. In such an environment, the often intense divide between deeply religious Muslim and Christian citizens and the always high-stakes nature of politics and power means that political violence frequently becomes religious. 
Both Christians and Muslims feel that they represent the one true God and are obligated to convert others. But tensions have been running high for decades in the nation's so-called Middle Belt, where North and South meet, an invincible fault line that divides the country in two halves. Islamic extremist group Boko Haram, dubbed the Nigerian Taliban, has been raging havoc in a brutal campaign since 2009, seeking to implement strict Sharia law across Nigeria. The jihadist group has unleashed a reign of terror throughout the country's north and is responsible for at least 30,000 deaths and displaced about 2 million others. In 2010, Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi proposed that Nigeria be divided into two separate countries to avoid further bloodshed between Muslims and Christians, sparking immense anger in Nigeria. In a speech to students, Gaddafi praised the example of India and Pakistan, where he said partition saved many Hindu and Muslim lives and went as far as comparing Nigeria to the former Yugoslavia, which collapsed after the end of the Soviet Union and split into several independent states, sparking conflicts in Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina and then Kosovo. Although religious massacres of Muslims by Christians and of Christians by Muslims in Nigeria generally take place within the country's borders, the underlying causes are a complex mix of political, social and economic grievances. Nigeria's suspicion and violence along religious lines are one reason why the mainly Christian South and mainly Muslim North have alternated in the presidency for the past 23 years since the return to civil rule in 1999. Zoning of the presidency between the North and the South is intended to give everyone a go at the presidency. In reality, it works in a binary way. A Northern Muslim president would be teamed with a Southern Christian as vice president or vice versa. However, the 2023 presidential elections was a perfect deja vu scenario as Nigerian history repeated itself. Almost three decades ago, Moshud Abiola, a Yoruba Muslim from the Southwest, won the 1993 presidential elections in what was meant to signal the end of a decade of military rule. But the generals led by Ibrahim Babagida and Sani Abacha annulled Abiola's victory, triggering five years of bitter dispute. By the way, it's important to note that it was General Abacha's predecessor, Babagida, that steered Nigeria into the organization of the Islamic Conference in 1986. Now, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the winner of Nigeria's presidential elections, is uncannily similar to Abiola. Tinubu carried the flag of the ruling All Progressives Congress Party. He is a Yoruba Muslim who hails from the Southwest and faces the same religious controversies that Abiola faced three decades ago. Like Abiola, Tinubu picked a Muslim from the north as his running mate, which for all intents and purposes guaranteed religious controversy. Having a Muslim president and a Muslim vice president is warring Christians of a Muslim domination that lends weight to the accusation that the ruling party has an Islamization agenda for Nigeria. Today, Nigeria's religious climate is far more combustible than it was in 1993. Since then, sentiment has been inflamed by the imposition of Sharia law, sweeping attacks by Boko Haram and the Islamic State of West Africa province, and the sometimes aggressive spread of Salafists and Pentecostal Christians. To start with, Christians have always been afraid of Islamic or Northern domination. The Christian share of Nigeria's population is on decline due to lower fertility rate compared to Muslims in the North because Muslims on average are younger, have more children than do Christians, and there is a pervasive fear that Islam might expand and gain greater influence by using the resources of the federal government to its advantage. Anyway, there is widespread feeling in the North that the South has somehow sprinted ahead of the North in education, business and industry, that the South has made greater strides in escaping the restraints of tradition and that it is, as a consequence, unfairly prospering. In reality, for most of the years of independence, the North has produced the majority of the country's leaders and nearly all have been Muslims, leading to the political concept of Northern primacy. British colonialists traditionally awarded political leadership positions to members of the Muslim majority in the North. After independence, the Northern political class used the army to control power and distribute resources to themselves. 
In the 1990s, a number of northern politicians developed a political theory of domination. The East should control trade, the West the civil service, and the North political power. Muslims have been accused of wanting to impose Islam on Nigeria, but mobilization by southern Christians have suggested that there would be secession or warfare. Under the government of the previous president, Muhammad Buhari, many Christian schools were taken over by the state and permits to build churches were held up while the construction of mosques was stepped up. During the country's constitutional review process, Muslims argued that the country is not secular in the true sense of the word, something Christians were vehemently pushing for. The Jama'atu Nasril Islam, the umbrella under which all Islamic organizations in Nigeria rally around, contend that Nigeria can never be genuinely secular unless the country, which is already heavily Christianized, is fast de-Christianized. They alluded to the political system of Nigeria as being based on Western civilization, which is Christian. In addition, the Nigeria legal system, which has the English common law as its cornerstone, is Christian-inspired and laden with Christian ideals and doctrines. They queried whether a country where Sunday, a Christian day of rest and worship, is work-free, but in which Friday, the Muslim day of special congressional prayer, is not accorded a similar treatment, can truly be said to be secular. They gave many other examples of what they termed Christian manifestations in the nation's public life and institutions, which include the use of the Christian cross as a symbol of medical and health services in government-owned establishments to the exclusion of Islamic crescent, which is a symbol of medical and health services to the Muslims, the adoption of the Gregorian Christian calendar for official use to the exclusion of the Islamic calendar, making 1st January of each year a work-free day without making 1st Mubaram a work-free day, fixing long holidays to coincide with Christmas and Easter festivals without corresponding arrangements for the Muslim festivals. They concluded by saying that in spite of all these Christian manifestations in the nation's public life and institutions, some Christian leaders are calling for secularism for Nigeria Area, not of course realizing that if secularism were to be applied, all these Christian manifestations entrenched in the nation's public life must be done away with. According to data from the United Nations, Islam is the fastest rising religion in the world. This has stoked fears in the Christian community. Similarly, many Muslims fear that globalization and Western culture undermine Islam and therefore view them with suspicion, if not antagonism. For a country to be considered an Islamic state, the following four boxes need to be ticked. The principle of sovereignty of Allah, the principle of the Prophet's authority, and the principle of a state in which sovereignty would be exercised in the name of Allah, and the principle of political consultation system. But while angry Christians may talk of dividing off the oil-rich South from the North, the prospect of an all-out civil war splitting Nigeria into two countries is considered unlikely. Many acknowledge it would be virtually impossible to separate peoples already so woven together. All northern states have substantial Christian minorities, and up to half of Nigeria's more than 30 million strong southwestern Yoruba ethnic group are thought to be Muslim. Many families in the Middle Belt are mixed Muslim and Christian. That any such attempted split would be catastrophic is one thing most Nigerians agree on, regardless of religion. If you liked this video and you're open to having some better understanding of Africa, consider liking it and subscribing to Reason Africa. Every single video will make you realize just how much more there is to know about Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.